All right. Good morning, everyone. Now we can finally start. How are you guys doing? All right. Um, my name is Sang. I'm a third-year student at NYU College of Dentistry, and I've been hosting a lot of social events with a lot of different people, and Secure Dental and Dr. Liu is one of them. And I'm really excited today. And um, although I've been hosting a lot of events, uh, you know, the most nervous part of the event is always waiting for the people at the day of the event. But I'm really glad that you guys made it. And um, I'm really proud of you guys. So yeah, uh, it was quite difficult for me and my team to come up with the, uh, the right title for today's event. Because uh, we didn't want to use the term, you know, such as conference or forum. Because I know it sounds really boring. I was sure that a lot of people will just you know, scroll down and forget to sign up. So um, the title, as you see, is the uh, transition into the real world dentistry. And the reason that we chose the title is, is deeply related to the, the club, the student organization, the Team Dental that we made. Um, our goal and our aspiration for doing this is building a community and culture where people can learn, interact, and find possibility and opportunity you know, as needed together. Uh, personally, I'm not a big fan of school education. Uh, I did a lot of studying in the D1 years, but I'm really get tired of it. So I always wanted to you know, learn the more applicable stuff. So um, as you guys know, there's a big discrepancy between what we're learning from school and what we can actually and realistically execute outside of school. So uh, I always wanted to bring down the gap between these two extremes. I know it's really hard to find the right balance between these two extremes. But if you're thinking in a different way, it's very sim simple. You just need to meet more people. I'm not talking about the random people. You have to find the right people whom you can learn from. And that's the whole point of today's event. Um, yeah, and uh, we have an amazing guest speakers waiting for you guys today, and uh, they've been, you know, they're coming from everywhere. Someone, some of our, the first speaker, Dr. Yongwin Park, he's, uh, he fl he's flying from South Korea for you guys. So uh, if you guys have any question or any concerns in terms of your uh, career and how you guys wanna, you know, step up to the next level, um, their time, knowledge, and whatever the, the skills they have, for the next few hours, it's all yours. So make sure you go to them and talk to them. And um, yeah, and I have to emphasize our biggest supporter, Dr. Noel Lee from Secure Dental. He's the co-founder of the Secure Dental along with Dr. Zafri. And uh, they've been managing 11 practices really successfully. And also Dr. Noel Lee is really passionate about guiding and mentoring the next generation, which is us. So I'm really thankful to Dr. Noel Liu and Dr. Joffrey for setting this up and every, for us. And yeah, as I said, they are all yours. So uh, I'm really excited. I hope you guys are excited too as well. And uh, time to bring in Dr. Noel Liu to the front, right? Can we play the video? Thanks a lot, thank you. What's going on everybody? Everybody having a good morning? Come on, let's get some crowd fired up. Let's go. Everybody having a good morning? Yeah. There you go. Good job. Hey, my name is Noah Liu. I'm a co-founder of Secure Dental, and basically it's my wife and myself. We founded our organization. We are really, really passionate about what we do uh, with our associate dentist. And even though today it's like we call it a you know, kind of recruitment event, I want to get that out of the way, but, but we are not here for that purpose. We are here so that we can share our knowledge from the clinical world of dentistry and bring it to you guys. Okay, so my story is nothing different than how you guys started. How many D1s? Bravo, love it. You're the only one. Two, two? Oh, okay, okay, sorry, I can't see with the light. Yeah, no, awesome guys. You guys are taking a great step. How many of you guys were here, were, were last year, saw me with Dean Bertolami for the LEAP course? Okay, great. So, you know, this is, here, here's the why, okay? When I, start, when I start my speech or I start my mentorship, it's always with the word why. Why do we do this, right? But the reason we do this is because time after time, 
when I started my position as an associate dentist, I was just thrown in into an operatory with two rooms, a chart full of schedule, okay? And pretty much I had to navigate on my own. So if you guys understand, like you have friends, you have family, or, or whoever is in the dental world, when they started off, they started off exactly the same way. But there are some organizations out there that's gonna get you a little bit of training, it's gonna get you a little bit of, you know, like a side mentorship, but it's nothing like when Dr. Joffrey, my wife, and myself, we like to be hands on. So I call it, you know, being in the trenches with you guys. So that's my key, that's my word. So D1, D2, I love you guys because you guys are taking a great, great step. So my story starts from pre-dental school. All right, so when I started, I started applying for many, numerous universities. Guess what? Took a loan, sat for the exams, went for interviews, and all I got was just rejection letters. How many of you guys got rejected at least three times? Most of you guys are lucky then, okay? I got rejected almost 11 times. Now you guys must be thinking, oh, this guy's retarded 11 times, okay? No, because you know, I had a different, mis I had different con you know, uh, concept about what it takes to be intellectually smart and what it takes to be real life smart, okay? Intellectually, I was probably like mediocre, the middle of the class. But as far as what I want to achieve, I can tell you this much is I'm willing to outwork anybody if the situation presents itself. And that's what got me into NYU. So I'm a graduate of 2007. And like many of you guys, you guys all have your own story. How hard it was to get into dental school. You know that, right? So when I was in dental school, Let's be honest, guys. How many of you guys are here for free lunch? Come on. Hey, you know what? That's OK. That's OK. I was, I was the biggest hoarder because I used to go out there for every single lunch and learn I was out there, OK? Getting free lunch, free pizza, free sandwiches. And that's OK. But the key is learn something, all right? Go out there, spend the time, but definitely learn something. So after graduation, I started working for a corporate dentistry. And about four years into it, I was like, you know, this is work, working great. And it was a high volume practice. We were seeing about 35 patients a day and pretty much no lunch, right? And, uh, you know, I just had this goal that I want to open up my own practice. So little did I know, it was like 2010, 2011, uh, we started applying for loans. And practice loan at that time was really, really hard because, you know, the market just recovered from the 2008 uh, housing crisis, and all the banks were, like, really, you know, like, sparse in, uh, in, in giving out the money. So we asked for about half a million, like 500,000. It wasn't that crazy. And we got rejected again, almost every other bank. Finally it came a point where I went to one of the dentist association, uh, 8 by 88, it was, it was called, I think, New Dentist Association uh, something. I went in there, and I'm a kind of person, I never go to these meetings. I went in there, Wells Fargo was there, and uh, I applied. And after a few weeks, they go like, you're approved for 300K. A little bit short of what I wanted, but we made it work. So we got our first location in Peoria, and that's how we started rolling, all right? So what I'm trying to say is the message is the, 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 the decisions that you guys make today will affect your future, and wherever you guys are today it was all because of what you did in the past, all right? So from there, we founded our Secure Dental, then we just started with the operations, and the key to success is take care of your patients. If you guys are in dentistry, just because of the fact that you think you guys are gonna make good money, you're in the wrong field, all right? 
We're gonna talk, we're gonna touch base a little bit on the questions that you guys had about GPR, about specialty. Just understand one thing. We are bringing in real life clinical dentistry point of view so that you guys get a glimpse of what it looks like. We're gonna be talking a little bit about finances. We're gonna be talking a little bit about contracts, agreements, what to look for, what not to look for. And pretty much this morning, we're gonna set a stage so that we know what the rest of the day or this morning or afternoon is gonna look like. It's gonna be uh, Dr. Park. Uh, this gentleman, he flew in from Korea just for us. So we're gonna get him up here. He has his own one hour lecture. He's gonna do that on implants and aesthetics. And then right after that, we can grab some you know, food and stuff. And then after that, we will start with a panel discussion where I will bring in our associate dentist who's working with us, all right? And we'll have them up here, we'll answer questions, and then you guys will have a chance to ask questions. So it's gonna be a really interactive session, and the only thing I ask you guys is just, you know, listen, learn, and just ask away, okay? Because this is the reason why we do it, is because that's my passion. Now, I said that this was a recruiting event, but we hardly have any room for any more candidates, all right? It's because we understand the value that we provide, the opportunity that we provide for you to master into clinical dentistry, speed, efficiency, and doing it the right way. There'll be a lot of practices out there that's gonna tell you to do production, go fast, right? But kind of take a step back and see what's your goal what you're trying to achieve. And that is really the limiting factor that's in our own heads that's gonna stop you or make you go forward. All right? In my LEAP uh, lecture, we spoke about mindset, we spoke about goals, we spoke about a lot of things, right? If you guys remember, um, it's pretty much what you guys really want. Anything we decide today will affect our future tomorrow. So make sure whatever step you guys are taking is having a goal that end in mind and then reverse engineer to where you are currently right now because your future self will definitely appreciate that, okay? Now, without further ado, I would like to get Dr. Park here. A quick introduction about this gentleman here. He graduated in Italy from Pisa University. He stayed in Italy for over 12 years. And he is currently like the principal dentist at Ganem Dental Office. He works alongside with Dr. Kim, who was here the last time. If you guys remember, we had, a, we had another event in uh, November, right? Uh, he's a coordinator of master's degree program in advanced surgical extractions and implantology at the International Medical University of Rome, and also director of Korean Dental, International Dental Association. And he still does all that. I mean, this, this guy has so much credentials under him. And for him to come out here, fly out of Korea just for this event, it's such an honor. So without further ado, I would like you guys to just give him a standing ovation. And Dr. Park, let's go. Thank you, thank you Dr. Liu. Thank you for an energetic inter introduction. And thank you for invitation in this huge event. I, 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 did, I thought that it, it, sh it sh should be much less bigger than this, this type of event. So it's a great honor to be here to speak in front of many people. And thank you also for Korean, uh, Korean Dental Student Association to organize the event. And uh, today I want to, I want to speak a yeah, little you. bit about my story and small lecture for you, okay? So, thank so you. Before you start, Doc, thank you very much again. Okay, before thank you. Start, guys, just give him a big hand there. Come on. Let's go. Oh, can, can you hear me? No. I think the mic is not working. 
Okay, I, I will use uh, hand mic. Okay. So, hello everyone. My name is Youngmin Park. Maybe some some of you already know about me because I I am working with Dr. Kim and um, I also uh, am and. I am also uh, working for Korean International Dental Association. Before starting, I want to introduce by myself because uh, it, it could be on um, um, information for your future also. Um, I, st I studied in the dental school in University of Pisa. It's in Tuscany in Italy. And my dental school is located, uh, located in front of the tower of Pisa. And this, this piazza, they, this is Piazza dei Miracoli, is Plaza of Miracle. And uh, I graduated here in 2016. After my graduation, and I, I did my master degree in, same, in the same university about aesthetic dentistry. And I did also master degree with Dr. Kim in University of Lom, University of Camillus. And now I'm working for, for as a visiting professor there for aesthetic part. And I did also my PhD degree in, I'm still doing, I, I should write my thesis to graduate in, in Seoul University. And my major in, in, in PhD degree is oral maxillary facial surgery, but unfortunately I don't do much surgery in my clinic. Okay, this is my team in, in Korea. Everybody know about Dr. Kim, right? Yeah, he's a famous guy in our clinic. And we, we have one oral surgeon and oral periodontist. She's our periodontist. He is prostodontist and orthodontist and endodontist. And I'm working as a general dentist. And I do especially aesthetic treatment in my clinic. When I opened my clinic, with Dr. Kim, it was three years ago, and most of patients are coming to our clinic uh, because they want to extract their third molar. So maybe 80, at the beginning, 80, 90% of patients came to our clinic uh, because they have a problem with the third molar extraction. So when we move our clinic together and open our clinic wider, and I want to start to do aesthetic treatment in my clinic, but uh, as many patients came for third molar extraction, there was no many patients in the, at, at the beginning. So I, in the first year, and it was in 2021, I concentrated my practice to make a good portfolio because it was really hard and tough to convince the patient to, to treat the, the aesthetic treatment such as uh, veneer or crown or something like that. So I strongly recommend to you, dental student to documentate where the treatment that you did in the school and also after school. It is very important to taking a good picture and, and, docu and make on docu on document and your portfolio. Also, I, I think it's important also to find a job in, in, this, in, in this kind of area. So this is a video I uh, showed to the patient and every monitor of the chair uh, patient can see this kind of video because they come to our clinic for other reasons. So I should show them that how, how, how many kind of aesthetic treatment I can offer for them. And these two guys are one of my patients and ma uh, many people think that I'm working for Dr. Kim, but it's not true. And we are, we are working for these two guys. These two guys are inheritance of this building. And we are, me and Dr. Kim are working for them. Okay, so, so I, I should, I want to tell, tell it. And, and uh, rent fee is very high also in Manhattan, in here in New York. I think so it's the same situation. So I strongly recommend to go outside of the city. Maybe it will be a good opportunity, but however, we are working in the center of the Gangnam, and it, this is exit 10 in Gangnam Station. I think most of you guys are, are Korean, even though somebody, I heard that don't, don't speak Korean well. 
However, when you come in Korea, uh, I'm working here, so me and Dr. Kim are working here, so uh, please visit our clinic. We are very open mind, so we are already uh, always happy to to see a new people, and especially uh, dental student or dentist from abroad. Okay, and I start my lecture since uh, last year, and we it was on. Um, on Korean K Dental Conference in Las Vegas, and and then I uh, fortunately um, I think it wasn't so bad, so I had other opportunity to speak in front of many people. Also, the, uh, today is one one of the event that I that I do. This is maybe this is the first event I do in uh, do my lecture in English, and and. So my English is not perfect, so if you don't understand something, please don't hesitate to contact me also after the lecture. Uh, as Dr. Yu mentioned, I, I'm working for Korean International Dental Association. This is Korean community, in, uh, Korean co community of dentists who studied abroad in, uh, outside of Korea and who are coming back to Korea. And we, have a, we create a group in Korea because since 2016, we, when we created the, the group with some U.S. dentists and European dentists and Japanese dentists, there wasn't a group in Korea uh, who studied outside of Korea. So we do a lot of events in Korea. So when you come to Korea and if there's some event, please come and we can make, uh, make a good networking together. And it is very important, I think, to in the future also. And so we do uh, many kind of event, and you can find it on Instagram. In and you can, if you if you put Korean International Dental Association there, you can you can find the our association Instagram uh, profile. And I'm working also with Dr. Kim, with Gangnam International Implant Academy and Gangnam Implant Academy. And I met him when I. Uh, when I, uh, one year later, when I created this association with other dentists, and Dr. Kim uh, started his lecture abroad outside of Korea. And I attend his course, life surgery course uh, in Korea because he used to uh, do uh, twice a year in Korea before in Tijuana. Now he is more concentrating his activity in, in, in US and I think it was five, uh, five uh, life surgery lecture of Dr. Kim, and in, in Korea we 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 do uh, one Sunday uh, for six time. However, in uh, his course in Tijuana is more concentrated, and he do from Thursday to Monday. It is total four day full life surgery courses in in Mexico. When I meet, meet Dr. Kim, we started to collaborate together because my association has a uh, huge networking with the dentists who studied outside of Korea. And, and this is one of example of our collaboration. And, and this is my, uh, we start to collaborate also in Italy. And my professor in Italy uh, invited Dr. Kim to do a lecture in third molar extraction. And many, many Italian was interested about it. And they already know him uh, with you too, because today um, social media is very, very, very powerful, I think so. And I also participate to translate his book. And I used to go uh, to his life surgery course once a year. So if after graduation, if somebody are interested about implant surgery, it will be a good, great chance to come and join us. And we also create a master degree with Italian University. And it's like one, one week in, it, this program is con convided in one week in Korea and one week in Italy, and other lectures are held on via Zoom. And we have also k Dental Symposium on May, maybe two, two months later in, in New, New Jersey, near here. And many Korean famous dentists will come to speak. And Dr. Kim will want to uh, invite also with, with Dr. Liu, um, some of Korean dentists to 
uh, Korean dental student to, to join in this event. So, so we will let you know uh, more details, okay? So I finished my brief story about my life and my career. And today I want to um, give you some message about minimally invasive concept for anterior aesthetic treatment. I think in university, you guys learn uh, conventional treatments, but, but when you finish your school, there are many, many new kind of treatment in, in this moment in the world. So I think it, it could be interesting. Um, maybe you didn't know before, but I want to explain um, this my new concept of new approach for anterior aesthetic treatment. And I start to do more minimally possible because in Korea it is, uh, Korean patients want minimally invasive treatment. I, I, will, let, I will explain uh, later well. However, what is minim minimally invasive dentistry? Uh, when, I, when I find the article on the PubMed, uh, there was an article on 2004, and it's, it's, it speaks that uh, minimally invasive dentistry is very important because patients and doctors think that original tissue is more valuable than artifact. And this concept can bridge the traditional gap between prevention and surgical procedure. It, uh, I think it's more concentrated with uh, procedure that we, 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 we can perform with bonding system. But this, this article said that there's a lack of motivation, so it is not easy to, patient, uh, to persuade to patient to motivate and pay for this kind of treatment. But in 2024, I think uh, original tissue is much, much more important than artifact for us, and we understand now in, with, the, with the science. And also patient thinks that they want to preserve their uh, original tissue as much as possible. And this concept, I think so in, in, in 2024, uh, can, can bridge uh, every single conventional treatment. It means that it gives us much, much more option for every single treatment. And now I think so uh, we can motivate patients and there are many patients who want to pay more for mini invasive kind of treatment. And I want to talk about this kind of treatment. Uh, one example is that Dr. Kim, and he, in his lecture, he's already talked about minimally invasive third molar extraction. It, what it means that when he do the extraction, he, he tried to do less flap as possible, and he tried to do not touch the bone as, uh, as possible. So in this way, a patient can have many, uh, less discomfort after su the surgery. So he became famous for this reason, I think so also. He, this guy is another example, and he used silver fluoride iodide for the tooth who, which has a huge decay. And after putting this kind of material, there's a formation of third, third tertiary dentin, so he can treat the, this kind of problem without doing endodontic treatment. And he is uh, one of the famous lecturers in Korea, uh, Professor Jung Chul Park, and he performed a lot of ki uh, new kind of treatment. This is one example of lip, lip positioning. It's very interesting. I want to try one day. And, and he resolved this kind of problem, problem uh, with lip surgery, not with crown lengthening or, or, uh, or bone surgery. So there are many, many new kind of treatment that we uh, are performing in, in, in now um, that is not uh, taught in the university. And this is one, the, another example that of my professor in Italy, and he, tr he tried to resolve this kind of uh, problem of recession with composite. And he make a clot, and he can gain and resolve the recession. It, this is called restorative guided creeping attachment. And after proving that, we can see that gum is held well, and there's no more bleeding. And this is one famous uh, dentist who is working f in California, I think so. He is a Swiss guy. Pascal Mane is very famous, I think so. Many people know about him. And in his course, we can see that he do a lot of 
uh, new kind of minimally invasive treatment seminar. And he don't think, talk about crown or conventional treatment. He, he, now he's talking about resin infiltration, vital bleaching, fragment reattachment, which are whole uh, mini invasive kind of treatment. So I think in the future of our dentistry, minimally invasive approach are very, very imp important. And I, and I don't know if in the university they are teaching this kind of treatment. However, um, I'm concentrating with white tissue, which is tooth. And there's also many treatment, uh, which, is, um, uh, which is concentrated with um, minimally invasive approach. The green colors are treatment that I think that which is uh, kind of minimally invasive treatment, such as enameloplasty, resin infiltration, no prep veneer, or silver diamine, inf diamine fluoride. And also gum bleaching, gingivectomy, RGCA, and lip repositioning is kind of uh, non-invasive treatment which uh, we can learn and perform in our clinical activity. Today I will concentrate my, uh, my lecture on, on the tooth, but I perform when the when patient arrived in this case is in this situation. Uh, I think also this patient was came our clinic for third molar extraction, but but I suggest them that you, there's many options to to increase and improve their smile. So I suggest her to do little gingivectomy and and enameloplasty for tooth grinding, and I can resolve in this way. And also for this patient in Korea, many, many uh, aesthetic clinics suge will suggest a uh, veneer treatment for or crown and a whole aesthetic treatment for this kind of situation. But I try to do crown here and gingivec just with gingivec gingivectomy and little enameloplasty, I can resolve the problem. And patient was happy with the result. I start this kind of minimally invasive treatment because when I suggest them, whole veneer or, or, or crowns, patient was surprised and there's many clinics which are very low cost in Korea. So it is very difficult when I consult them and I, when, I, when I give them the price, they try to find another clinic. They, they go to the clinic which are very famous for marketing, for aesthetic treatment and and they have a uh, low cost, so they are more attractive for them. So I started to minimally invasive way for every single patient, and in this way, uh, patients are happy, and if they don't like the result, I can go over and do other treatment like veneer or crown. Also, this is one case of, of gingivectomy, and this is gum widening. And single, uh, simple enameloplasty can be also useful. I try to charge them the money. And when I do other treatment, which is more invasive, like veneer or crown, I, I cut down the, pr uh, the, 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 the price that I charged before. So patient is always happy with if they can resolve the problem without spending uh, a lot of money. Also, this kind of situation, I suggest to patient to do first uh, enameloplasty to reduce the length of the tooth. And patient was happy, so she didn't do another treatment not, uh, until now, but maybe she, if she didn't satisfy, she can come back and I can make a crown and with a discount price. So in this way, I can hold the patient who came to our clinic for third molar extraction. Even if not, they will go other clinic to do another, to, to do other, other, other kind of treatment. This is a veneer case, and I patient want to resolve um, because it's not symmetric, so I, I changed a little bit enamelo, en with enameloplasty of number, number nine, and patient was happy. So I think it's very interesting, and I, I'm performing this kind of treatment since, since three years ago. So now I have more, much more idea, and I, I, I'm always, always becoming, uh, becoming um, performing well, I think so. Also, this patient came with 
uh, saying that she doesn't like this form of tattoo, so I, I slightly changed, and she didn't do uh, the veneer. And also, I do uh, a lot of uh, resin infiltration, and this patient had a white spot, maybe caused by MIH, and I do resin infiltration, and this is immediately, immediately post-operative picture because she was a foreigner and she had to go back to her country. I did a little gingivectomy here. And she had a little bit canting of the tooth. So she wanted to resolve a little bit also this kind of problem. Um, I suggest uh, we can resolve this kind of problem with many options. We have many options. We can do orthodontic treatment or crown lengthening or other invasive uh, treatment. But I try to resolve with small gingivectomy and tooth grinding with enamelloplasty. And it's not, we, I, I didn't uh, fix all of your, uh, the canting, but uh, she, she, she loved, however, the treatment because she resolved it in the simple way. So there was a canting, I did little gingivectomy and little enamelloplasty to resolve the problem and patient was happy. Maybe she, she wants more, she, we can do, uh, crown lengthening or veneer or the other kind of treatment, and I think so. I can put some Botox here to to release the muscle 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 to make a, a, a less high smile here in the in the right side. And this is other case. And patient came with white spot. Uh, I think is she has. Uh, already high spot or so before orthodontic treatment. And I just reduced a little bit the length of the tooth and reserved the tooth with little enamelloplasty and resin infiltration. And she was happy. But the problem that I found is that after infi resin infiltration or enamelloplasty, the surface of the tooth is always rough. And so nowadays I'm trying to use also chemical materials, which is, which is uh, made by nanohydropatitis, which is uh, one contents of the enamel. And I think the research is quite good, and, but I don't have many cases now because I start, this, you to start to use this material since, since a few months ago. However, uh, for enamelloplasty, we can see this in this study that uh, we can do enamelloplasty one third of the enamel. And, and this study said there's no problem, no sensitivity, and no, pro no any other complication of the, this kind of procedure. But I think we perform a lot in amyloplasty, but we don't charge for the patient. But I start to charge it because, because it's more difficult. difficult and and I, I think it's a very uh, valuable treatment for, pa for a patient because we can resolve some problem without, without eliminating, uh, without doing the rest restoration. And this is the dimension of the enamel. And there's some technique. This is Korean book about um, dental anatomy and then uh, for, for making crown. And there's some tips to make tooth, tooth uh, less longer. And we can move the line angle in the inner, inner part, uh, in, the, in the outer part to make, make, make an elliptic, uh, optical illusion in, in, this, in this kind of way. And this is the technique for, for white teeth. So there's many, uh, many rules in, uh, to make and perform this kind of thing. I think, I don't, I, I think it's not very useful for you for now, but however, this is kit that I use for enamelloplasty and for, for policing the tooth. And but policing tooth is very, 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 very difficult because I use the camera, which is very good to take a picture and see the surface, and it's not easy. And I, and this is another case of a white spot, and I use I call infiltration, and I can resolve the problem in this way. If it doesn't work, I can suggest to patient to do composite or veneer, and I can cut the price that I. I already charge for the patient. And the, the most problem of doing resin infiltration was that uh, it wasn't predictable. It means that uh, when I talk to patient and patient asks me if it works or not, 
um, I, can, I, I can tell them that sometimes it works, but it's difficult to patient after the treatment. If it, does, it doesn't work, patient wouldn't like to pay for the treatment. So it was a huge problem for me at the beginning. For this reason, I adapt on Korean machine. We can ev evaluate uh, the, the grade of demineralization of the lesion. And this, I will explain later more. However, this F average and F max is the, is the grade of the demineralization of the lesion of white spot. Also, the, this is one, the another case. And this is the case that I love most. Patient with, came with this situation, and I think that resin infiltration is not enough to resolve the problem, but, but it works. And I used icon of DMG, and, and this curate pen machine of Ayobayo. And it's, it's a Korean company, it's quite famous. Our, almost one third of Korean dentists have this machine. So this is very useful to detect carriers crack and also periodontal problem. And this machine, uh, with the program, I can evaluate this, this part of and grade of demineralization. And Fmax is the, where the, the grade of demineralization is, is, is huge. And, and this is... This is after the treatment. The grade of diminution is, is, is diminished. And this is a QRF technique, quantitative light induced fluorescence. And after emitting blue light, the tooth reflect uh, green and red fluorescence. And this can be measured by the filter of this company. And when there's a diminution, uh, this value uh, increase, and when there's a carious and some problem of bacteria, and this much, this red fluorescence is, is emitted by porphyrin, which is product of metabolism of bacteria. And this is uh, the machine I started to adapt this kind of a machine for for minimally invasive treatment, and it helped to detect also plaque and some problem of periodontal disease. It helps to detect also carriers, and there's a program, and they made a, a lot of classification and a lot of studies, so it's very interesting machine. So you can find on Google on, on some, some document, scientific papers, I think so. So if you are interested, you can also ask to me. I'm working with them. And it helps to also to detect the crack of the tooth, which is very difficult to see with our eyes. I used to use it when the patient have a pain, but I don't find some other reason. So it is very powerful machine, and I do other lecture for Malaysian people with Q, uh, QRA system and no prep veneer, and this is the team of the QRA. They will come also in, in on May with the machine. So this is the Korean guy, uh, President, President Yoon, and they are starting selling also in US, so if you are interesting, you can contact uh, me or I will give you the contact or, or, or on, on May they are coming so you can see the machine also in the, in the K-Dental Symposium. And I introduced also my professor in Italy. They are starting uh, the research together. And this is my Korean team. Some of them are from NIU. And we formed the uh, 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 research, uh, clinical research team of the IOBIO who's from, uh, of the dentists who studied outside of Korea. And also this kind of, now I start to take a QA before the treatment and after the treatment. And before, you can see that Fmax is minus 5.8 and now it's zero. Because the machine, they don't give the number when the, when the Fmax and F average is less than minus five. So they just tell zero. This is another case. Fmax is minus 15, so I used to do it when the uh, Fmax value is my, uh, less than minus 15. Uh, and when the differences between F average and Fmax is less than five. 
So I do a lot of these cases because when I start to the resin infiltration, uh, when the patient is satisfied, they are very satisfied because when they go to the dentist, every dentist will, will tell them that you should do uh, composite, but it will uh, make a discoloration with the time, so it will be better to do the veneer. Especially in Korea, with low-cost clinic, they al al always suggest veneer. So, so but they want some. Most of people want to reserve it without doing veneer. So, so nowadays in my clinic, I have at least two patients about this problem. So I reserve in this way and. When does it, when, there's the cases when I can reserve with the uh, resin infiltration, like this case, as I told before, when the F max value is more than, less than minus 15, it doesn't work. So, so with, the, with the experience, I understand when I, when I can use this resin infiltration and when, when I can't use. So I usually, in this situation, I speak to the patient that it wouldn't work. But, and if it doesn't work, we can do other composite or veneer treatment next. And this is other case. We can see that the F max value is minus 33, and the differences between F average and max is so huge. So it wouldn't work. I know with the experience. So I suggest another kind of treatment. And when we do this kind of treatment, we should be pay attention to not touch the gum with the with the uh, hydro hydrochloric acid because with icon resin we use a strong acid, so it can be very harmful for the gum. At the beginning, I didn't I didn't understand well about the the product, so I make some complication. But now, I I do always this kind of treatment, so, so I'm. I can do it with safe way. However, this is a microbiology of the structure, my structure, and the company said that it can penetrate 100 micrometer. It is 0 0.1 millimeter, and uh, it can uh, it can occupy 60% uh, of the pore volume with icon resin, and they said that it can in increase the index refractive index. Uh, as sound enamels to resolve the problem. This is some question that, that I sent to the, uh, the DMG company and the response in the way is not so important for you now, I think so. So now the things that I'm doing for uh, be more mini invasive possible is that I want to do some research with uh, University of Yonsei about the surface treatment after the treatment of enameloplasty and I call icon resin treatment. So maybe in the future I can give you more detail and more information. And if somebody is interested about uh, resin infiltration, you can find in, on YouTube this video. This is quite good, but, but not, they don't give our know-how. Know -how. There's more tips that we can use, but it's like a calling game. We should work a lot to, to resolve the icon resin because uh, many people who used icon resin told me that it doesn't work because the company said that after etching, just applying the, the mon resin monomer on the tooth, just a small second. But however, uh, this is uh, a hydrochloric acid which is very strong, so we should be secure that we isolate well the gum and the this acid didn't go to the gum. And after doing etching and we should dry and check if with the alcohol white spur uh, white spur disappear or, or not. So if it doesn't disappear um, in uh, we, they, they, uh, they recommend to do another etching with three, three minutes. And they tell that we can applicate the, the, the acid for three at uh, maximum three times. And they check again. So 
so this acid eliminate not just the pore, but it eliminate also a, a slight, slight part surface of the tooth. So we shouldn't use a lot of time. I used to applicate maximum three or four times. So they are checking again with the with the alcohol because when they put the when we put the alcohol on the spot, uh, if etching is good, uh, the lesion disappear. And they suggest to separate the tooth with the with the matrix with with the transparent matrix, and put the mono, resin monomer to infiltrate. And this, uh, and they move on it, and we should work as a curling, curling player. We should move a lot of time to, to, to eliminate the white spot, and that's, that's the most important things. So if you want to learn, and you can find on YouTube, so, so I go ahead. And I think uh, to perform a minimally invasive concept of treatment in our clinic, we should learn also composite, because which is very useful and powerful for some cases. And I do a lot of composite cases, but I'm not still good. And there are many, uh, many, many masters in the world, so you can learn from them. I go ahead. And this is one part that I can speak more for you, because in Korea, many, many patient came to our clinic and asking about no prep veneer because many, many um, marketing uh, dental clinic, they, they do a lot of other advertisement about no prep veneer to hooking the patient in their clinic. This is one case that I performed and she was on, on, on singer. So she wanted to resolve this problem immediately. And, and there's, there wasn't a bone, so it was so difficult to do uh, gum surgery in here, and I'm not an uh, expert in gum surgery, so I reserve it with no prep veneer with pink porcelain, and she was satisfied. It, it can be an, an option. And this case is a uh, patient came with a fracture, and I reserve with with the veneer, it, which is made by Fedespatic veneer by built up by the technician. So to to, the, to perform this kind of treatment, we need a great technician. And this was the patient. In my clinic, there are many foreign patients because uh, I studied in Italy. I'm a unique guy who can speak Italian in, in Italian in dental clinic. So many Italians are coming to my clinic. And they, Italians are very, very social. And they bring also many other friends, foreign friends. Yeah. And this is other case. In diastema, we can perform this kind of no prep veneer. But we cannot do for whole kind of treatment. When I come back to Korea, I studied in Italy, and my professor did a lot of no, no prep cases for diastema, for peg lateralis, and where there's, there's a space. And when I, when I come back to Korea, many, many clinic advertised and telling that we can perform no prep veneer for horse my design. And this is literature and that's about no prep veneer. This is done by Italian dentists. And and I asked to my professor, in Korea, we do a lot of no prep veneer for many cases. And also, even though the normal arch and there, if there's no space, Korean dentists try to do you no know, prep veneers. I try to do many case, uh, cases of no prep veneer. And my professor uh, told about this, this study done by Italian group. And this study said that no prep veneer is very predictable and very nice treatment and this result is, and survival rate is as same as normal veneer. But the study, uh, they used just cases like diastema or peg lateralis, which are correct indication for no prep veneer in this, in, in, in general, general concept, I think so. So when I told to my professor that I perform a lot of no prep veneer, he, he was ang angry with me because he 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 under he thinks that I'm doing a uh, abusive dentist that that do the cases without consider considering the patient. 
So, however, um, before I explain about mini, minimally invasive kind of treatment, uh, which wasn't predictable before, but the science is developed, and uh, I think many new technique and our experience is upgraded. So now many kind of treatments are becoming predictable. So I think the icon resin that I do with the curing machine is one kind of one kind of um, treatment that now it is more predictable. So we can use um, many times, or so or other dentists can use together. I think so. So, so minimally invasive concept is very important, and now many kind of minimally invasive treatment are are cost benefit, very effective, uh, uh, considering also cost benefit. In Korea, as I mentioned, many clinics are doing advertisement and telling, and they are try their, trying to hooking the patient. The veneer, 32만 원, is like 250 US USD. It's very cheap in Korea, but they are hooking the patient in this way. I think the unique way in Korea, in my situation, is, is doing another thing. Because if I do veneer in the same price, my clinic will fail. And it's, it's impossible to do the veneer with 250 USD in Korea with, to offering them a quality work. This is one of famous Korean, um, Korean clinic, Minish. I think everybody knows about it. They do this kind of treatment. Yeah, I, I think it's a good option, but, but not, patient, not all patients are agree with it, and not all dentists are agree with this kind of treatment. So I also, I think Lumineers is kind of Minish product in US. I still, they are using a lot, this kind of product, Luminear. I think not much dentists use it. it, but however, also in US or so in other country, um, there are many kind of uh, marketing dental clinics or marketing dentist. But I think the important thing that we we need to do at, is that we should learn and we should perform what we think. And this is veneer cases that I do without prep. It's not perfect, yeah, I don't, I don't like because I can change the form because if I don't prep the tooth, there's always limit. And my friend that, why you do veneer, uh, I think you need to do just this, this tooth. And this is another case, and this is classic no prep veneer in Korea. Yeah, it's quite good, she's handsome, and his tooth look good, quite okay, but but if this tooth looks wider in this area, and there's some limit. So however, no prep veneer is, it can be an option, and we should learn uh, the correct indication. And in some cases, we can applicate, and I applicate in, in some case, cases and uh, making my own rule. But today, I cannot explain all about all of my rules that I choose the correct cases to do no prep or minimal prep on my kind of approach. So if someone is more curious about it, uh, you, can, you guys can join to my one day course in the future. And this is other case. This is the case that I like the most. And I think the important thing is to consider to perform the no prep veneer is we should consider the space. If the, there's a space, we can make the no prep veneer with aesthetic result. If there's no space, we should to the, to the prep, I think so. And the other three things that is very important for no prep veneer is pass of insertion of the veneer and margin and passive fit before cementation. And this is the part that I prep. This is after immediate after preparation and adapting the veneer is very thin. And this is after cementation. So I like to take a picture for no prep cases. Uh, you cannot see the margin. Margin is very, very thin. And this is the result. And there's many advantages about this is book that I wrote with my Italian group. There's many advantages with about no prep in here because we don't do do injection. Patient don't have a pain, we can save the tooth, 
and we can have one more chance to do retreatment. And we don't need a temporary veneer to, to, to wait the, the, the production of the final, final product. But there's many limit because we cannot change the color is very uh, fragile, fragile and we cannot change the form and just um, few technician can produce well this kind of veneer. And this are a classic indication of veneer diastema pegrateralis, took fracture, smile design, abnormal tooth shape, tooth discoloration. This is the what you learn in the university. But when I do my, my own uh, whole one day course, I explain that this six factor is more important to consider to performing the no prep or minimal prep veneer. These three are absolute uh, contraindication or indication that we should consider because if there's bad occlusion, uh, bad occlusion which can, for example, H2, H bite or third class three patient, we shouldn't do uh, no uh, veneer or no prep veneer. If, there, if there's no space, we cannot do the veneer, so we should prep the tooth. And if there's a carrier, it's impossible to do no prep veneer. And other three things is that passive insertion, uh, it's difficult to explain everything today, but when we put the veneer, it should be very simple. And there each, uh, before putting with the cement, we should check well about passive fit of the veneer because veneer is so thin. So if there's no passive fit, we should cement with, with the force and it, it always create a complication. And the other question is the margin. So we should learn the correct technique to, to hide and the, to make the margin more natural possible. And so today uh, I want to give just one message to, to, to you guys that minimally invasive concept is, will, will be the future, I think so. And also is one example of uh, Tower of Pisa that they spent a lot of money to, is 360 is like 2,700 million USD to, to make the tower uh, straight right. 45 centimeter. So it's kind of minimally invasive treatment for Tower of Pisa. So it's the same things, I think, so for our tooth of our, our, our patient, which are very valuable. So this is my, uh, I want to today explain about my new concept. It's not perfect now, because I should learn more everything about, about composite, about soft tissue management. I, I'm trying to do, but I'm not expert now, but I will always export, uh, do my best to learn all, all, all the other kind of minimally invasive concept. I think it can be a powerful way to, to performing an aesthetic treatment also in clinic, which they don't do performing a lot aesthetic cases. So this is my uh, one day course in Korea. I, I do also in U US in, on May. So I think some, some of you are, will be invited with, with the secret and their group for the event. So please join and come. My lecture will be free, I think. So there's no extra charge for my lecture. So you, if you come on May, you can come to this my lecture. This is a diagram for the patient to explain about my concept. And thank you. Thank you for hearing my lecture finish here. Thank you, Dr. Park, for an amazing lecture. I didn't know that there is a special machine that, that carries, but uh, thanks for the lecture again. Uh, right now it's 12.43. We're going to have a short lunch break till 1.10. And after the lunch break, we're going to do the exciting panel discussion. So when you guys submitted the RSPP form through the Google, through the Google form, you got, I know you guys also submitted the question you, you have. And the panels, they all reviewed the question and they're ready to answer them during the discussion. So uh, get ready for it. We're gonna come back at 1.10. Thank you.